Now airbrushing is a huge investment when it comes to customizing Gunpla. But if you know how to maintain it properly and keep it in good working condition, these investments can last you a really long time. So today I'm going to go over proper maintenance and care for both your airbrush and your compressor. Let's get it. What's going on everybody? Pamo Therapist here and today in part 3's video I'm going over proper airbrush and compressor maintenance. Now if you haven't checked out part 1 or part 2 I'll go ahead and leave a link up to the playlist in the corner so you guys can check out all the videos so far. Now in today's video we're talking about how to properly clean and maintain both your airbrush and your compressor. So without further ado let's head over to my paint station where we're going to go ahead and clean up my airbrush. All right, before we can begin cleaning up our airbrush, there's gonna be a few things that we're gonna need. So I'm gonna take my airbrush, I'm gonna set it off to the side, and the first thing you're gonna need is gonna be your dedicated airbrush cleaner. After you get that, the next thing you're gonna need is some Q-tips if you have access to them. If not, that's okay, because you can go ahead and use a paper towel. After the paper towel, you're gonna make sure you need your slop cup so you can dump out any excess paint or thinner that we're gonna be using, which leads us to our last thing, which is gonna be the thinners that we use if you're using solvent-based paint. Now once you're ready to begin, the first thing you're going to do is add some of your thinner or solvents to your paint cup. Next, we're going to mix the paint by covering the end of our nozzle, then pushing down and pulling back on the trigger. This is going to force air back into the paint cup, which is going to help cut through any of the paint that might be stuck on the walls of your paint cup. Next, we're going to dump the excess paint and thinner out into our slop cup. If there's any excess paint or thinner left, we can go ahead and remove that with a paper towel. Next, we're going to finally start disassembling the airbrush by removing the back body section first. The next step is to loosen the needle chucking nut, not remove it completely. Next, we're going to remove both the needle cap and the nozzle cap at the same time by unscrewing it from the front end here. Depending on the airbrush model, your nozzle may still be attached. You can go ahead and remove that now too. Next, we're going to remove the needle by pushing it forward out the front of our nozzle. This is going to help make sure that no paint goes backwards into the body of our airbrush. Once that's completed, we can go ahead and remove the chucking nut, the spring guide, the spring itself, the needle guide, and finally, the trigger. So now we have our airbrush completely disassembled. If you get paint on the back parts, you can go ahead and just wipe them up. So we're not going to focus on those today, as well as the trigger. And what we're really going to focus on is this main body unit here, the needle, the nozzle, and the needle cap. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to dip your needle into the airbrush cleaner bottle. Next, we're going to remove the airbrush cleaner by pulling the needle down through a paper towel. Now, we want to be sure that we don't push upwards because we might damage the needle and we might prick ourselves in the process. So make sure you pull the needle down and away from your hands. With the needle done, we're going to start by dipping our Q-tips into our airbrush cleaner. And we're going to go ahead and wipe up any excess paint that's left in the main cup of our airbrush body. Once that's clean, we can go ahead and move on to the main face where the nozzle and our nozzle cap sit. We can clean out the entrance where the paint comes out, as well as anything on the face or the threads. Once that's done, we're going to switch to the smaller Q-tip so we can go ahead and clean out the nozzle. Start by inserting the Q-tip into the back of the nozzle and clean by spinning either the Q-tip or the nozzle itself. Continue this process until the Q-tip comes out nice and clean like you see here. Now that the airbrush is clean, we can go ahead and start with reassembly, starting with the trigger. When reassembling the trigger, make sure the groove on the underside of the trigger faces the back of the body. Once the trigger is seated properly on the valve, we can go ahead and reinsert our needle guide, our spring, and our spring guide. Next, we're going to reattach our nozzle and our nozzle cap. Depending on the type of airbrush that you have will determine how exactly you go ahead and reattach it. For me, it's easiest just to drop it in and then screw it on in one go. Once the nozzle and the nozzle cap are seated properly, we're going to go ahead and reinsert the needle from the back and we're going to push it all the way in until it seats. 
After that, we'll go ahead and put on our needle chucking nut. And this is also a good time to check to make sure that our trigger is engaging the needle properly. Once we're sure that the trigger is engaging the needle properly, we can go ahead and thread on the final body piece and then color airbrush clean. Hey guys, if you're enjoying the video so far, leave a like. It lets me know you're finding value in the content. If you haven't done so already and you want to stay up to date on any time I come out with a new video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss a thing. Lastly, let me know in the comments below what questions do you have about my complete airbrush tutorial series. If you drop a comment down below, maybe I can add those in my future videos and give you guys a shout out. Anyway, let's head back over to talk about maintaining your compressor. Now when we're done painting for the day, the first thing we're going to want to do is relieve all the remaining air from our tank by pushing this valve at the bottom of our water trap. Continue to hold the valve open until your pressure gauge reads zero. If your compressor has a tank, turn it over so that you can reach the tank plug. Once you locate your tank valve, you can go ahead and unscrew it. Now, it's important to relieve your pressure before this point because if you're not careful, the valve can go flying off and can become a very dangerous projectile. Now, once you remove the plug, go ahead and stand your compressor back up over something that's gonna catch all the excess moisture coming out of the bottom of the tank. After it drains for a bit, go ahead and check to see if there's any additional moisture. If you see any drops come out, give your tank a little shake to get the rest of it out. Once you're sure the tank is empty, go ahead and remove your cloth, turn your tank on its side, and go ahead and wipe up any excess moisture that may have gotten on the tank, as well as any rust or residue that's left in the threading, as this can be detrimental to the integrity of the tank in the long run. The final step is to screw on your tank valve one more time, stand your compressor back up, and you are done maintaining your compressor. So there you have it guys, part three of our complete airbrush series covering maintenance and the cleaning of our airbrush and our compressors. Be sure to tune in next week for part four where we're gonna cover actually putting paint down on some plastic and some techniques that you can use to achieve different results on your kits. Finally, a big thank you to the Gundam Place store. They're working with me to get this video series out to you guys. So if you or anyone you know wants to get into airbrushing their kits, we're gonna take you guys from zero experience to your first painted kit through this entire series. Big thank you to them. I'll leave a link down in the description below for all of your painting needs. And if you guys wanna check out this awesome shirt that you can get from them, I'll also leave a link for that down below. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you found some value in this content. Remember, take care of yourselves, take care of the people around you, and I'll see you in the next one.